What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. So before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Clayton Phillips for a twenty-five dollar donation via the PayPal. He's a note saying just for keeping it real when it comes to the sport of basketball. But I also want to give a shout out to uh, the brother Aaron for another donation to the channel. And I see your video request. Uh, and I probably can do a video on that in a couple of days. So, um, much respect to you guys for showing love to the channel. So, Stephen A. Smith uh, made a statement recently on why he feels Will Chamberlain is not part of the GOAT debate. So I'll put a link to this article in the pinned comment in the comment section below. Will Chamberlain, often regarded as one of the most dominant players in NBA history, seems conspicuously absent from the ongoing debates surrounding the title of the greatest of all time. Stephen A. Smith, a prominent figure in the world of sports commentary, recently shed light on the reason behind this omission, and it revolves around one iconic name, Bill Russell. Regardless of his dominance, at the end of the day, his number one nemesis was Bill Russell. The great Bill Russell, 11 championships to Wilts 2. End of discussion. You can't have a nemesis and they out-championship you by 11 to 2. That is why Wilt is left off. Okay, <clears throat> this is my issue with that. They said... Uh, Smith's explanation for this curious absence is both straightforward and compelling. He points to Chamberlain's ultimate nemesis, ultimate nemesis in the NBA, Bill Russell, as the determining factor. Bill Russell's historic feat of winning 11 championships far surpasses Chamberlain's two championships. This stark contrast in championship victories with Russell overwhelmingly dominant in this regard has led to Chamberlain's exclusion from the GOAT conversations. So yeah, from the current GOAT conversations, because what you guys are looking at are just championships. You're just looking at championships. And yeah, championships are part of the equation. So, if it's championships, right, well then how come you guys never have Bill Russell in the GOAT conversation then? Let's, let's, let's keep it a buck. If it's about championships, and the main reason why you don't have Wilt in the GOAT conversation is because of championships. Russell 11 to 2. Why is Bill Russell not in these GOAT conversations then? Because then you guys will say it was the team around him. And you know that. You know this. So you're being disingenuous when you bring up this fucking argument. You just don't want to have Wilt in that conversation because a lot of you all have biases against Big Ben anyway. You have biases against anybody that played basketball before 1990, if not 1980. So it's a convenient excuse to put Will out of it. When it's funny, as recently <coughs> as 20 years ago, before the rise of people like Stephen A. Smith and others, Will was number two, battling Mike for number one. All of a sudden, he's not even top five. Now he's not in people's top 10 anymore. He's not even in some people's top 15. All because of championships. Well, let me put it to you like this. I don't want to hear none of you motherfuckers ever who say that Wilt shouldn't be part of the equation because he couldn't beat Bill Russell. I don't want to hear none of you motherfuckers ever talk about LeBron couldn't beat the Warriors because they had a better team. Don't want to hear none of that shit from none of you niggas. None of you. You know why? <clears throat> because LeBron could do something that Wilt couldn't do. LeBron could collaborate with his fellow NBA stars and plot to join on other teams. Wilt couldn't do that. Wilt would pretty much outside of Philly 
when he had a great relationship with that owner, which is why he won a championship there. And he won a championship with the Lakers, despite the fact they were all past their primes. But I will say this, it's interesting how when you put Wilt Chamberlain at the end of his career, and he actually had talent around him, he went to the finals in 1967, 1969, 1970, 1972, and 1973. Finally, when he had a championship team around him, which was unfortunately in the wrong half of his career. When Will Chamberlain was going up against the Boston Celtics, he wasn't going up against Bill Russell. He was going up against the Boston Celtics. Bill Russell was going up against Will Chamberlain. See, when Will, Bill Russell went up against any team that Wilt was on, his primary focus and only focus was to stop Wilt, Wilt and Norman Chamberlain because that was their one real dominant piece for them to get victory. But when Wilt went up against the Boston Celtics, he wasn't really going up against Bill Russell because head-to-head -head he outplayed them thoroughly. In their careers, Wilt averaged 30 points, nearly 30 points, and nearly 30 rebounds against Bill Russell. Despite this narrative that Bill, uh, Bill Russell held him in check or shut him down, which is absolutely fucking untrue, Wilt averaged 29 points and 29 rebounds against Bill Russell. Whereas Bill Russell averaged 23 points, but only 14 rebounds. And I say only because Wood averaged 29 against him. So he dominated him on the boards and outscored him. The problem was he had to contend with that entire Celtic team. And if you really look at that team, the difference between the Celtics and any team Wilt was on was the backcourt, not the frontcourt. The difference was they had Bob Cousy, Wilt did not. They had Sam Jones, Wilt did not. They had Bill Sharman, Wilt did not. They had John Havacek, Wilt did not. They had Frank Ramsey, Wilt did not. They had Tom Heinsohn, Wilt did not. And that was the difference. And because there was no free agency, they would keep that team together for the totality of Bill Russell's career. Imagine if Kevin Durant was with the Warriors his entire career and still with them. Let's say the nucleus of Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Hale. Let's say they were even because of the rules Let's say they're able to keep a guy like they were able to keep that bench together. The two thousand, all those guys, Harrison Barnes. Let's say they'll be able to keep all those dudes together for thirteen years. How many championships would they have won? And this is another thing I don't like about this argument. <clears throat> Wilt wasn't the only fucking superstar in the NBA at that time. If Wilt wasn't winning, that also meant Jerry West wasn't winning. That meant Elgin Baylor wasn't winning. That meant Oscar Robinson wasn't winning. That meant Jack Twyman wasn't winning. That meant Bob Pettit wasn't winning. That meant that Walter Walt Bellamy wasn't winning. That meant all those guys weren't winning. That meant Walt Hazard wasn't winning. That meant uh, goddamn, uh, uh, um, um, oh, I can't think of his name right now. Sweet shot from the Hawks. Can't think of his name right now. He wasn't winning. None of those guys were winning. Do, do you understand why we don't see teams win 11 championships anymore? Because of free agency. They never factor this shit in. Because these, these people don't really know history like that. And you know, you know what Steven Stevens is supposed to say? Oh, I don't want to hear no. Because you don't, you don't want to hear it. Because it, it destroys your argument. Yeah. If a guy like Bill Russell won 11 championships in today's world, he'd be called a GOAT. But if you're playing with a virtual dream team in an 18 to 14 team league, well, the other teams only have one other star. 
the chances are you're going to win a lot of championships. You know, they tried to do this with Giannis recently. They tried to do the same shit with Giannis when he lost to Boston. They're trying to turn him into Wilt Chamberlain. Oh, well, Wilt, uh, you know, Wilt failed. He should be able to beat the... Since when does one great player expect to beat a great team? Because I'm sorry, ain't that the excuse y'all used for LeBron when he kept losing to the Boston Celtics? He needed help, right? So why the fuck does Wilt not need help? This is why I loved it when people that actually knew about that era talk sports instead of people in the last 20 to 15 years, 10 years. You know there was an actual, that's a channel, I'm not going to name his name. I'm not going to name name that channel because it's ridiculous. I saw a short video from that channel the other day that made the argument that we're smarter than Einstein because, you know, of evolution. When I saw that, that's when I realized that we're lost, man. We're lost. It's over. The days of actual, real, intelligent sports talk is over. And now it's just about hits and clicks and likes and saying the most outlandish things and and disrespecting people of the past, players of the past. They don't give a fuck, man. It's all about the mighty dollar. This is the capitalist. This is the effects of the capitalist system that is fucking worse. Some people on here, man, will gladly sell their mum up the river for a dollar. 